Was that you or me? That was my butt. <laughs> get it off the microphone. Need to get your butt off the microphone, man. We're trying to record. Hey, guys. Welcome to the Tyler and Neil Explain Everything podcast, where we break down today's topics and summarize it. Consensus. And sound effects. Toots magoots. Toots magoots. Hey, welcome to the Explain Everything That's my podcast. burner account where I talk about <laughs> NBA basketball. <laughs> Toots magoots. <laughs> I would follow that. I would follow it just to... uh, It's you explaining how basketball works, the rules of basketball. Re-explaining, but always a different sport. Like, I'm like, so to play basketball, what you do is you get a stick and you get some ice skates and you get a big old ram puck. It's like a a, a 3D prism. You you want to live metal rakes, don't get a plastic one. You want no plastic rakes out of her? Why did I say it like that? I'm sorry. We've lost everyone. What are we talking about today, Tyler? Today, Neil... We are talking about we are talking about Google for Education. Oh, yeah. Now, don't leave. Don't leave. Stop. You're like, I'm not Stop. a teacher. I ain't never been to school. Didn't need to make school. I make more money than you. I quit school in eighth grade. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I've heard that from your nephew for teen years. Um, what I want to talk about is Google. Essentially, Google Suite, the Google products, which I'm assuming you do use. We've Gmail. already talked about diabetes, and you say Google Suite like that. Immediately, <laughs> my blood sugar goes up. Oh, I'm oh. sorry. Different word. Different spelling. At first, I didn't I, catch, I, and then I, I was like, I you're so yeah. smart. Yep. You're so witty. I can tell your diabetes is doing Super all right. Super witty. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. You're, you're fast right now, Bo. Yeah, on point. Uh, you're fast. Like, you saying, Bo, taking Google picture. Google educators. Google educators. Thanks for bringing us back. Got it. Google, and not even Google educators. We're talking about, like, the Google suite of education, Google products. So you probably use Gmail, and attached to your Gmail is your drive, and then you've got docs, sheets, forms, all that other stuff. Mm-hmm. Okay? Now... I'm assuming you use all that. Now, that is something that is becoming very, very widespread in education. So previously it was, oh, you need to buy your Microsoft Word and your Microsoft Office. It looks like you're trying to make a document. I'm a a clip. I'm a paper (laughs) clip. What you trying to do there, sport? Um, I'm trying to X out of you, fool. Mm. Get out of here, mister. Clippy. Clippy, clippy. I'd rather just not know than hear from you. And so, uh, so what I want to talk about is some of the stuff with regards to Google and not only where it is in impacting education, but how that's going to impact everyone else. So you think, oh, education after high school or college, you don't have to deal with it. However, yeah, yeah. and I want to start with this, and then I want to talk about some of the other things within it. Um, when, whenever you think of businesses, a lot of businesses use Excel. They use all these Microsoft yeah. products. Yep. It's actually, I was looking at some of the, the, um, the stats there are more businesses that are Google for business now. Google, like they pay, really? they pay for the Google yeah. products and suite and all that stuff to share and collaborate within their organization. More of them now than Microsoft. Because I would think it was Microsoft that hadn't seen that chart. I'm sure it would have been. However, yeah. here's what people got to think. Because whenever people are like, no, I like my Microsoft Word or I like this. Yeah, and they're deeply and they're, entrenched. In they it. love it. Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, great. You like something that costs you money. And is more it, it's and outdated it's more as soon as you got it. Yes, and you can't collaborate. You can't right. do any. There's so many more features on the Google one. I'm not. I don't work for Google. I'm just. I love it, and I want people's jobs <laughs> to be easier. Yeah. And here, oh, one time I was doing. Um, we were talking to uh, my friend Leanne, and I were both Google trainers. What's up? Shout out, hey Leanne, you're not mm. listening to this. Hey, and um, we were presenting to some college students that were going to be teachers, and they're about to graduate, and there's a bunch of them yep. there. Uh, at a nearby college, if you will, their colors are purple. Their field is ugly or beautiful, depending on if you attend it's a school color. or if you're using an honest opinion. It's a confusing color. It's pattern. Um, it got them on the news, though. They talked about them on the ESPN. Uh, so, wow. So we're in there talking to these students, and <laughs> we are talking about, and we come in a little hot about why Google's better than Microsoft. And so we were just, just because it makes it more fun, we just started talking about it and we're like, this is better and you can do this and this. And we're like, name something that you think is better about this, about Microsoft Office versus Google products. Okay. And they'll like, well, you know, the documents are here. I was like, well, actually you can share them here and you can do this or Google did this first. So now they've already done this. We had one kid and he was like, I don't know if his dad's name is like Jeff Microsoft Office. I don't know why everybody's uh, first name is Jeff. Jeff is a whatever really, I make up. That's your go-to that's, name. That's my go-to first name whenever I do this joke. And he was like trying to say stuff, and we were like, well, that's good, but this is better. This is why it's, Google's better. Mm-hmm. And then he got, and then we said this, we did, and he goes, well, what about this? And we go, this is just a kid. We're presenting. He's sitting out there with everybody else, all of his yeah. peers. He's not a teacher yet. We interview people to be teachers. And he goes, he said, well, what about this? And I, we go, well, this, this, and this. 
and Google's free. Microsoft costs you a uh, hundred bucks a year yeah, to renew your yeah, license yeah. per person. Yeah. And he, his argument to that was, well, heaven forbid you got to pay for something. What? And I go, uh, and I'm sitting there thinking your argument has come down to you saying we should pay for things uh, that are outdated. And it's, so anyways, because it's free for Google. He's learning how to be a coach. He's, that's, that's what he's very doing. Motivated. It's, that's what, well, no, because he was paying attention to us oh, enough yeah, to ask questions. So much. he's not a coach. Not going to be a coach. No, I'm sorry. Shout health, out to my coach friend. teacher. I have a lot of friends that are coaches. They are, they don't care because they're not listening to this and not paying attention. <laughs> um, they're on their phone texting each other in a group text. I've done PDs. I know what you're doing. And so um, here's my thing to people that are on businesses that are reluctant to get into this world. And this is why I want to encourage you. The movement in education is with Google for education products. It's yeah. all these things, doc sheet <clears throat> slides. And it is, it is, it's more convenient. I'm saying there's, there's little features that you can be like, well, that feature is not. They'll have it if they don't already. Yeah. They'll get it. It is. The difference is, and this is what I'm looking at trends with regards to where we'll be in 10 or 15 years. Every K through 12th grade kid, which people are forced to go to school, so it's everybody, uh -huh. they are using these products. They're all on it right now. They're on it right now. That's right. what they're learning. That's what they're, that's what they're comfortable with. Right. 10 or 15 years from now, where are all those kids going to be now? Oh, yeah. Ruling the world. They're going to be, yes, right. they're going to be the Zuckerbergs. Yep. Or they're going to be working for you. And guess what? You're going to start delegating things, and they're going to be like, you're going to be like, hey, build this spreadsheet, or hey, do this, or mm -hmm. build this formulas, and they're going to be like, hey, that's great, but instead of us having five right, different right. files of this <laughs> that we email back and forth, why don't I just create this sheet? You can pull it up on your phone at any time, see any of the demographics. Any, anywhere you want. So they're going to start switching those businesses over that haven't come over. I genuinely think that Microsoft 20 years from now will be struggling very bad because, yeah, I agree. because they have not adapted to education. And the way that Google has. Right. And once you're in that and those people feel comfortable with you, they're going to be running these businesses or they're going to be working yeah. for people and doing their work and they're going to use the product that they're comfortable with. So I've, I have uh, three kids. I've got one in college. I've got one in high school, one in, in uh, well, technically junior high, but whatever. <laughs> uh, they, I saw them go through this transition for a while where they used to use um, PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. They had to make a presentation. Then it switched over to Prezi. And yeah, now they're you all zoom using in. Google Slides. <laughs> yep. All of it's Google Slides. Everything. So it's it's been this progression of it. And you could see the way educators were thinking about it. It's like, oh, Prezi is this or whatever, but it wasn't Google Slides. But here's the thing. Well, like you said, if you don't like it now, if you think it doesn't have a feature, it is more than likely going to be in there. It will more likely be better than what yep. you thought. And that's the thing. So I notice it in how they say it. Yep. I say, hey, are you going to do a uh, – people say, are you going to do something on uh, PowerPoint? On PowerPoint, And they don't say that anymore. No, because used to, even for a couple years in education, even if you're just making any present – it was like Kleenex. Kleenex is a brand. It's not right, a right, – what is right. that, a tissue or something? <clears throat> they don't say you want a tissue. It's like you want a Kleenex. It's even a face rag. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, exactly. It's a booger <laughs> catcher. A, oh. It's a bug catcher. Um, I collect those, by the way. I'm just kidding. That's so gross. Oh, wow. I couldn't even let you think that was a joke. Um, Thank you. So now, and that's what it was for a long time. It's like, oh, I'm going to make a PowerPoint, even if it was something else. But now it's like yeah. they adjust because it's almost offensive yep. because, yep. and it's like some, some, there's certain people in a certain generation that uh -huh. don't get that, that <laughs> if you, if you walk into an interview and you have a PowerPoint as you, cause we make them do presentations whenever we do education right. stuff. If you came in, plugged in your flash drive and did a PowerPoint, uh, I automatically uh, think, I automatically right. know your level of right. technology. Right. As well, opposed to. You're subtly telling them I'm not connected to anything to, else. Exactly. And you know what I know as your administrator or potential future administrator? We don't use that. Mm -hmm. Everything we do runs through that. Now, there are teachers that like, are stuck on their PowerPoints, but we're going to convert them. Right. And here's my thing. It's not about it being, well, PowerPoint has this feature. PowerPoint looks a little better. Out of all of them, PowerPoint is the Microsoft version. Keynote is the Apple version. Right. And Slides is the Google version. Right. Google's the worst one as far as like looks go. Mm -hmm. As far as like design, Keynote's the best. Apple makes the yeah, best yeah, looking stuff. Right. I, I do pro a lot of presentations for schools on different things. I, every single one of my presentations used to be in Keynote. And I would go in and present and connect my computer. Nice. Over the past few years of presenting, I have zero presentations hmm. that are not Google Slides. Every single one is a Google Slide. And the reason is, 
It looks. It doesn't look as good. It doesn't. It looks better. Okay. You can input, embed videos. I'm sure. I fine. have to do it because you never know what situation you're walking to, and Google uh, Slides is the most adaptable. So I've walked in. And there was one time I was speaking sense. at uh, Lavaca Schools for back to school a few years ago. You know Lavaca? I know Leroy from Lavaca. Leroy from Lavaca. That's actually yeah, yeah. He has a boat. Um, and so I was walking in, and I walked in, and I was like. I was like 30, 45 minutes early before my talk. And I was like, okay, I'm about to present all these teachers. I was like, oh, I was going to see if you could just plug this in so I can run my keynote on this. And they were like, oh, we don't have that adapter or, oh, it wasn't yeah. showing up. And there's no explanation. It doesn't show yep. up or mm-hmm. there's no adapter, whatever the situation is. So I remember I was just sweating. So I'm like, yeah. this, I was, this was one of my first back to school talks that I got to give it, a, give it a school. So I was already a little nervous. So I'm like exporting it as a PowerPoint, trying to send it an email, and uh, it's taking forever because there's videos embedded. Converting it. D- and after that, I like I just slowly started converting everything over to Google Slides because now if I walk in, I'm like, oh, do you have an adapter for this? Like, no, we got a computer in the back connector. It's like, no problem. Uh, I sign into my account. Boom, pull up the presentation. Yeah, it's it's accessible anywhere. I can literally Everywhere pull it up on my go. phone right, right now. Right. It's too convenient. Yeah. Even though it doesn't look as good, so I'll that's sacrifice where it wins. that. Right. Well, that's the thing is, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how nice you made that presentation. Nope. If you can't present it yes. or get to it, it doesn't really matter. Or if it causes me that feeling before I go right. present, even if I get it worked Super out, sweaty. I'm still frustrated. So I'm, I'm sweating now just thinking about it, <laughs> Neil. I'm going to have to get another. Lavaca. Yeah, that's, that's my bad. deal is kicking in, Z's. Enzymes. Well, I think the uh, the accessibility of it. So my kids can do a presentation, whatever, and they can come home. My daughter has a Chromebook. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and which is... The number one device for schools right now, yeah. which you have to run Google products on because right. it's just essentially you're a browser. That's what a Chromebook is. Yeah. Using the browser. It's cheaper. It's oh, it's so way cheaper. Much cheaper. Now, I like, and because schools, at, people ask me at schools, it's like, should we get um, Chromebooks for all our students or should we get like iPads or iPad Pros or something like that with a keyboard? Right. And I always tell them because I've seen it. Like, I have an iPad Pro. Uh, yes, I, it's incredible. I've been using it for a couple of weeks. I absolutely love it. I used a MacBook before that. I don't use Google. I don't want to use a Chromebook. Right. And what people do is they buy Chromebooks for the students, MacBooks for the teachers. Oh, That's what they do whenever, they, if they wow. do it. But whenever they ask me, what should we get for the students? I say, well, what do you want the students to do? Do you want them to like research things, search them, share, collaborate, right, all that? Right, right. Just get a Chromebook. Yep. If you want them to create, yes. get the Mac product right. yep. because Apple is generated around creating, making right. videos, podcasts. You can right. do all this stuff. All of it's built in. Now, there are add-ons for Google to do it, but Apple's is just so much better. Like Final Cut Pro, GarageBand, you can do so much more with right. it than those products. And you can access Google. Right. And so yeah. Google, while they have the Chromebook... It's the best of both. Uh, well, Chromebook's owned by, like, there's Acer, there's, there's um, so HP. Many different. It's it's in partnership with Google, but Google's not making the money on that hardware. They have their own, but they did, like, higher-end stuff, like touchscreen Chromebooks, like really yes. nice yeah. stuff. But what Google's done is Google has perfected the software world. And so right. they're pushing a little into the hardware world. However, with Apple, they are amazing at their hardware and their software has its spots. Right. You know, it's not as like widespread in that world. And so it's for like, creation. It's not necessarily for consumption necessarily. Yes. Uh, I would much rather if I'm gonna go online, I'm gonna go do it through Chrome. Absolutely. Not gonna do it through Safari. No. But if I have to sit down and do a video, I'm not gonna I, Google doesn't have one. No. I'm not gonna make I'm not gonna edit audio on well, okay, classic example this. Yeah. You ready for this? You and I, we've got two laptops up. I am I'm recording this thing on a MacBook because I have GarageBand and all that other content creation stuff here. But for consumption, I'm here on the iPad going through all this stuff, yep. and you could you could input back and forth. Absolutely, interesting. Yeah, it's interesting. When I went to, I got the chance to go to um, Google uh, headquarters one time. We just like went and ate lunch there, and I'm walking by, and you think like Google, like because because the way we see it is like, oh, my Amazon doesn't work with my yeah. Hulu, which yep. doesn't work because they're yep. all competing. They're all the big names. They're all competing. They don't want their stuff to be super great because they want you to have to yeah. choose their stuff. Like I'm, they want you to buy Fire Stick to play your Amazon <laughs> Prime videos. Gary Busey, yeah, Gary Busey. Um, and I'm walking by and I'm Perfect. looking around at all these people that work for Google at headquarters. There's most of them are on MacBooks, right? And it's because. That's the hardware they want to use, uh, and Google doesn't care. No, they don't care. No, but no. I bet if you walked into Apple with a oh Chromebook, my. you' about to get yes taken yeah. out. And I, I don't, I don't know if that is a. And I don't, you don't want to go this direction, but I don't think that 
uh, Google has the same, um, it's Mindset. almost like indoctrinated. Yes. Right. Yeah. So it's like, we're cut off. We're, we are at war with everyone else. Mm-hmm. No, the Google's- better, the better option is let's work with everybody else yep. and get our stuff everywhere. And that's, how, oh, sorry. And that's, how, I just flung a cord. Okay. And that's how they got in, into the education system is because everybody was using Microsoft word. Well, Google got in and they were like, Oh look, you can do your stuff online share. And, but everybody's like, but, but I need it as a, Oh, cool. We'll make it first features they make. We'll export it as a Word file. Right. Boom. Yeah. We'll, wake, we'll yes. work with them. Oh, and export it as a PowerPoint. Go for yeah. it. Because they oh, know the, the answer is not to make it proprietary and no. it's its own thing. No. And once you start closing off and making yourself an island because you think it's better, you want to force people there. It gets lonely on that island. You're no man's an island. John Milton said that. That's right. You remember him. I do. Um, so <laughs> when you do that, you're closing it off. And I think Google did a really good job of spreading their web a little better. Yeah. Have you noticed this? Because we talked about Google's a little more open and Apple's a little more closed off. Right. Because it's funny, when I went to Google, I was actually there for a training with Apple. <laughs> and Sneaky. I bounced over for a lunch because a guy I met there knew somebody that worked at Google. And I was like, heck uh-huh. yeah, I'm going to go to Google for lunch. So I went over there and then went back to the Apple thing. Apple is so much more like secretive um, oh, and it's yeah. so much more like, like you said, proprietary. Mm-hmm. Think of the, the culture that was set by the owners, the generations, Steve Jobs and his generation yeah. versus uh, the guys who created Google and their generation. Uh-huh. It's a different... It's a it's, war. It, it's like it fits in with like the gen, uh, baby boomers versus right. millennials. Right. And it's their mindset. Millennials are more open, like flexible, come in, you work here for four years and you bounce out and get another. And right. the other one's like, no, you work here your whole life. You're here. It's like a lot hmm. different mindset. And I think that culture bleeds into how they run the company. So I mean, is it free... To have that suite of Google uh, products, softwares, whatever, yeah. Oh, absolutely. So I was the uh, tech director for school, and so, and this is another thing I tell teachers when I'm like, I know when I'm doing trainings and stuff for Google, I'm like, hey, you guys, if you're like, I know I love my Microsoft Word, my Microsoft, <laughs> I say, remember, first off, remember this, Microsoft Word never sent you a check at Christmas. Like, you ain't never gotten a no. thank you card from them. Uh-uh. Nope. They just take your money and run. Take the money and run. Now, I tell them, here's why you're not going to be using it in five years, even if you love it. Your administrators are going to get there. I said, I get, every year I got two bills. I said, I got my bill from Microsoft to use at a middle school right, district. Yeah, middle sized school matter. district mm-hmm. is based on teacher and student count. Um, a middle sized school district in Arkansas, we're paying anywhere from nine to $12,000 a year to use Microsoft products. No way. On the computers. Our bill every year from Google, $0. Well, that, Unlimited storage. Yeah, you yeah. use it. There, it's super convenient, it's easy, yep. it's collaborative. It's a no-brainer for a school. And it's like, literally, we got to the point where we said, we're, te- we told teachers, we said, we're not putting it on your computer unless you give us a good reason to put it on your computer. Yeah. And it's not to say money. I mean, that helps well, for a school. Help. Because, I mean, that money can go somewhere else. But also, it's just, why? You're wasting yeah. money because you want to feel comfortable with a product that's not as good? It doesn't make any sense. Uh, my family is all, it's so funny how, how easily adaptable my kids are. And they just immediately, they, they just, they gravitated towards that yeah. whole, the Google classroom and all that. Oh yeah. Um, my son's in college, uses it for everything. And, but their college doesn't, their college doesn't use right, it. They use right. what, Canvas or something at UCA? Uh, the Blackboard. I bet they still use, do I they think still they use do. Blackboard? I think they do. The, you can get certain, it just depends on who the, the teacher is. So the teacher gets to choose? Well, I think they have different requirements where their stuff is hosted, all that sort of thing. My battery died for the oh, video. Oh, man. So we're going all audio. Keep uh, going. The, um, the thing that actually won my entire family over about Google over Apple, and I'm not. it's not an either or. It's just that one happened to do something that the other wasn't good at. What it really came down to is Google Photos gave them the space on their iPhone 6 yeah. to be... They had 16 gig. We all had 16 gig iPhone 6s, mm-hmm. and they all ran out of room. Oh, Google immediately. Photos let everything go up there while the other one was Apple. And it's not a, a one's better than the other, but the cloud and all that kind of stuff, it was costing, and it was free over here, and we could offload everything and categorize it. You can also... Google Photos, you could make a, uh, a photo album based off of the face and it was so much more intelligent than any, anything else. And it was free. That yeah. was the thing that just blew And they're like, what's the catch? Yeah, there what is are you no try catch. To get from There's us. nothing. There's no, no catch. No, Google knows that they start you out this way. And it's like oh, Netflix. Yeah. They start at $8 for both the services. Yeah, what am I paying now? They're now? Up to what? 15? Yeah, 15, 16 bucks. Yeah. But we'll pay it because 
I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm connected to them. I've right. got, I want that show. I got Damn this. We got that. They, they trick you. That's they how they did. get you. That's how they get you. So Neil. the classroom, Google Classroom has everything. Is it for educators? Is it all going through Classroom? You don't have to have oh, Classroom, do you? No, you know, I mean, it's it's a free service. Now you can actually get that without having an education account. What? Um, you can actually get it. You just go to classroom.google.com, um, but you just can't add people that are into a domain. So like, if I went in and created one with, you know, my email, my regular Gmail, I can't add students from you know a school into that so they separate them so you can be out in the world out in the wild if you will and be added in that gmail but if you're in an organization then you have to start the classroom with that email address so it's it's just a way to protect students from like rando people okay um outside in the world uh so yes so classroom is a great way to like share tools collaborate do different things like that um but it's also um i mean completely free with it and youtube is owned by Google. Yeah. So it's like they integrate everything with YouTube, yeah, which YouTube's all, like the best learning resource ever created in the history of the world. I search, if I have to go search something on how to do, okay, so the um, the dishwasher just broke. I didn't even Google it. I YouTubed it. Yep, you knew you wanted to watch a video. And I knew I did. needed to see how they do it, and it wasn't enough that I would just get a, a PDF of the manual. I needed to see one specific thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, the... Uh, the it's weird. I think people probably forget that Google owns YouTube because they seem like such a strong brand. Yep. YouTube does. Oh yeah, um, and they don't they don't force you into Google. No, they do because to create a YouTube account, <laughs> you have to have a Gmail. Yeah. Yep. And so I, I just I love how their stuff integrates and it's just so easy and they make multiple ways to do it. I don't like being confused because when you confuse you lose. Story brand. Wow. <laughs> so, um, Thanks, I think Donnie. I think they make it easier. Thanks, Donnie. Donnie Millsap. Um, so here's. So this is kind of cool because, um, so I've been a Google trainer for several years. Um, I started out when the, I remember this, it was seven years ago. The first time I ever spoke in an education conference, I spoke on iTunes U. It is Apple's education yes. platform, yeah. which they don't mention ever. So no. I'm pretty sure they're about to phase it out. Well, yeah, why would yeah. they're going to phase yeah. it out? Because they they had it. It was awesome. I liked it. It was it was so great. I always forgot it was there. Yeah. Well, the reason you did is because at some point it stopped meeting the needs. It stopped adapting. It stopped being usable across different things because. Okay. They uh, weren't doing anything to pour into it, where Google was pouring a ton of money and resources oh, yeah. into their education side. Yeah. Apple kind of sat still for a while, and they didn't update it. Well, I noticed my room was, I mean, it had a couple people in it. I did that talk, and then I did it at another conference after that, and then I was like, a lot more people want to go in the Google rooms. So All I started right. learning as much as I could about Google, using it for everything, forcing uh-huh. myself to use it and get used to it, whereas my first love was Apple. That was my first thing I I ever talked about was Apple in the classroom and then iTunes U. And uh, and then I started getting in the Google stuff, became a trainer, and um, been that for a while. But this past year, I've gotten the chance. So this is kind of cool. So I got yeah. selected. This is where hey, this is Tyler I giving his like resume. Uh, but this, no, I just want to talk about This it. is a big deal. The, well, yeah. these. So there were two things I was selected for in the past year. One was from Apple and one was from Google. And... From my understanding, and this, I'm not saying this to be like, I'm not trying to like, hey, Tyler, dude, look at me, everybody. Oh. Everybody, look at me, look what I did. Hey. I'm just saying it because I want to show the um, one is an Apple Distinguished Educator, right. which they only intake um, maybe 100 to 150 every two years right, right. in the United States. And then the other is a Google Innovator. And so they're both, from what I can tell, the high, like, it's about as far as you can go. As right. far as like being recognized as an educator you by these two companies, right. yes. Oh, you had you, to you submit had to be, an application and video. You got the invite. Talking about yesterday. Yeah, I got yeah, Google Innovator. I got in yesterday, yes, you so did. I got into that that cohort. And they took forty two people in the United States this year that's, for that one. Now they do like another one, huge. two more overseas. But the, yeah, it was They're really taking cool. Taking two people from I, overseas. Taking two people from overseas. People from New- yep. Yep. Um, I don't want to tell them how to do their business. Vladimir but. Putin, Vladimir Putin Jr. <laughs> they're the two guys. They were like, we gotta let him in. He's very strong. He looks great on a horse. Um, so, mm. the the reason I bring that up is, um, I'm getting the chance to be in conversations with both of them, and I get to see what those companies. Because you're hearing directly from Apple, you're hearing directly yeah. from Google, and they're gonna talk about at these get-togethers 
what's important to them, right. what they want these top educators to know and promote. You went and to the use. Apple one already. I went to the Apple one already. I go to the Google one uh, in a couple months, uh, but I'm already in like a group text that is blowing up after wow. like a day. But it's good. I mean, it's a great conversation with really great educators. So I want to hear what they have to say. You did good because I want to learn. That was good. And uh, what my no, it was not. You were nice. Thanks, it's Neil. a good it's a good group text. Thanks, bro. You, I'm gonna add you in it. <laughs> Who's this guy? Oh like, my gosh! No worries with no, me, no, guys. Yeah, yeah. And so, uh, All you gifts. get to see what they're pushing for educators at the Apple one. They didn't mention iTunes U, not one time. Uh, iTunes U stands for iTunes University. It talks about like educating. iTunes U is their that's, Uncle Jim. That's nobody's old talking about. Nobody's Uncle talking Jim. about it. No, he's talking about Uncle Jim. Uncle Jim's sitting at the table by right. himself, yeah, yeah. eating the rest of the turkey and dressing and spitting out racist yeah, remarks. Yeah, yeah. Nobody oh, talks about. Okay, it. iTunes U is not racist, probably though. No, it was a bad analogy. But what they do push is the creation tools, and everybody knows that. And it's like talks about what they're doing. It's the reason I was like, I am behind because I don't have an iPad Pro because I'm watching all these educators yeah. take notes. They were on a MacBook. They no. Were all- no, they were all using these Mac, Air, my iPad Pro. Like, I did not pull my MacBook out very much because, like, I look like a, did anybody look bring like a, Grandpa Joe. An iMac and a cable and a cord with them. <laughs> I wish they'd had the old school ones, like the colored case That's ones. That's amazing. That'd yeah, been incredible. That'd be funny. I should have. I'm doing that next time. If no, I don't want to get that on a plane. Um, so, whenever I'm watching them, like, okay, here's one, just a really subtle thing. There was a guy that he does like a lot of leadership talks to superintendents, and he works for Apple, and he did a presentation. We think if somebody goes up and do a presentation, they're going to have slides, they're going to stand up, they're going to talk. Right. This dude gets his iPad Pro, which is connected, and we can see his screen. He pulls up. It's just It looks like a page, a blank piece of paper. And then he pulls it up, and it's like you can see really faint writing. It looks like someone did sketches and notes. So uh-huh. it's like a title, and there will be like four notes underneath. And then in the middle, it's darker. You can see it's more clearly. What he did was he took his presentation and sketched it out, had all his bullet no. points, little pictures, stuff like that, things that are he's going to talk about uh-huh. through that hour. And then he went in and he did the opacity and faded yeah. it. And so you can s- slightly see it when you're sitting there. And then all he's doing is he's talking to us and tracing in. Get so he out. doesn't have to remember, I'll have to memorize, yeah, do a yeah, talk, yeah. and do all this from scratch. He's tracing it in on the presentation and then talking about it with us, hitting the points. Wow. And we're taking the, I'm like, this is a genius way to do a presentation. What what app was he on? I'm pretty sure it was in, uh, I don't know if it was Nota, Notability. Notability. Um, he might have been in just like the, it was might have been the Notes app. Notes no, it wasn't in Notes. It wasn't Notes. It was a Sketch app. I don't remember which one it was. I okay. think it was Notability. Okay. But it was, That's dude, wild. it was so cool. And I was like, that is phenomenal way. And now you do restrict because... I mean, you could, if you're walking around and you have like an Apple TV, you can mobile your your right, iPad and right. walk around. But still, you might be limited. If he was sitting down just chatting with us, yeah. the way he did it, but it was so informal, That's so wild. cool. And I was like, that is a really engaging way. So I'm thinking of which ones of my talks I can adapt to that. I'm thinking it has to be more like leadership stuff because if you're doing, yeah. you want to be dynamic when you're doing the other stuff and you have to show. Programs. You know, you could also use that when you go to like uh, an amusement park or a street fair or festival mm-hmm. and somebody draws a caricature of you. You sit yes. down and they draw a caricature. Yeah. You could do that on an iPad. I already have one that's kind of pre it's pre-built. Yes. It's got the, like, it's the, the opacity is down. And you go in there and you just trace over it and you're like, here's your picture. And it doesn't look anything like him. But they already had it drawn <laughs> ahead of time. You could do that. Yeah, yeah. Like you're, you're not like, good at this. Why do I look like Nick Nolte? And I was like, <laughs> from the 90s, not even a current Nick Nolte. It's Barbara Streisand years, years with Nick Nolte. Yeah, he was great those years. So I just I think that with them pushing that and then with the Google one, like they're it's so much more wide open. Like because you have to present like a problem and then how are you going to solve it? It's almost like things. a thesis. Yes. And yeah. so I, I mean, I actually applied in the past and my videos in the past were like, I did drone shots. I did like, I made it like a big video. Didn't get in this one. I literally, okay. You remember the night we went to dinner before yeah. we saw uh, yeah. Hobbs and Shaw. Uh-huh. I did my entire application while I was driving home to hang out, to get ready to hang out really? with you guys. I was driving home. I was like, Oh no, today's the deadline. I was like, it's due at 11 PM. Like there's a good chance we're going to see a movie or something. So I'm not going to get to do it. Right. And so I filmed the video on my phone while I was like, I was parked in, like I was at a stoplight on day board, filmed it, said, this is what I want to do. This is the problem I want to solve. And then I did the voice to dictation for all the filling in all the questions, did it on the way home. And I got no in on that way. one. And my video looks like, I'm embarrassed on my video because it's not very cool. But Maybe they, they just want in. it to be real. It's not That's just it overly edited and not you know, hyped yeah, or whatever. I know, but I wanted to do that. I know. I well, wanted that for them. They just and had so, to break it out of you. Yeah. And so what I get to talk about for them was, hmm. I want to talk about culture. 
Uh, my thing was, I wanted to, my problem was, once you grow as an organization, yeah. once you spread out really fast, it's it's hard to keep that same core culture that made you successful at your starting point because you're having to hire, you're having to add people. in. You're just, it's just, and so my thought was, how can we make that culture stay consistent using technology um, across yeah. a vaster or wide growing fast demographic, all that stuff. Yep. Um, fast demographic, that didn't fit. A fast growing demographic of people. Does that fit? I don't know fast, what I said, fast but it was in. And I love that they allowed that to be my main project. My project wasn't how to get Google for education into more schools in rural no. areas. No, it's like. Yeah, because you're actually you're actually solving a real problem. Yeah, and, and something that doesn't wanting. directly relate to them. And so it's, it's going to be really cool because I haven't gotten to see on that side of it. The innovator, like Google's yeah. real tight culture. I've seen it some with the YouTube stuff that well, I've you're done. You're going to see it. I'm going to see, like, in the heart of it, I'm going to know coming out of that You're going to see those two foreigners, too. Yeah, Vlad Putin <laughs> and Vlad Putin Jr., <laughs> what we talked about. They got yeah. in overseas. So I don't know. I just think it's cool. Um, but I know that Google for Education is more widespread right now. However, Apple has some really cool stuff they're doing, and they're starting to make it more accessible, sharing, well, they have collaborate. To. They have to. And Microsoft has done the same thing. Microsoft 360, it's clunky, it's uh, slow, it's trash. Yeah. Apple's is better because, obviously, like Apple, but they also do better. things better. It's going to look better, and it's right. going to integrate with the devices your teachers are using. And so... Um, that accessibility or shareability or whatever you want to call it, at the end of the day, if you can't do that, you're not... Uh, it, it if it is not connected to the other people that you're doing it with in real time, I don't think it has any real value. It doesn't matter no. how good it looks. Doesn't matter how because you would use and you even said it before. You would use a product that doesn't look as good because, it's because more, it is more accessible yes. or or readily yeah. available. Exactly, and yeah. I know that you can access it anywhere. So that's what I think, and that's even with the Microsoft and even with um, the Apple stuff. The thing they have against them is they didn't invest in the software side. And so, like, as far yeah. as, like, the cloud accessibility of their software. Right. And so the problem is you have to buy their products to be able to share and create. Like, yep. Keynote, you can't make Keynote on a Chromebook. I can do a it's Google crazy. Slide on any device. Right. I can do it on my phone right now. Right. I know if I have an Android, I can do it. Well, Android is It's everywhere you want to be. iPhone. It's everywhere you want to be. That's mm. great. We should text we should Tim Cook that. and let him know. <laughs> but I think that with them not doing that, it puts them at a disadvantage because when I do a presentation, I have my slide. I give people the link. They're in the slide with me. They take it right. home. They use it. It's very specific what devices you can use to do the other ones. I, now, they're getting it and they're adapting yeah. it, but that's their that's the detriment there. Now, the, granted, the, the positive, they both have a lot of money, so they yeah, can do that these helps. things. It helps. It, money helps, I believe. I've been in a few meetings lately where it used to be somebody would print off meeting notes, yep. hand it to you. Um, that I, I immediately, my, my head tilts. I'm, I'm, I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. no. Then it went to, we've got a Google Doc that is in there that you guys could go look at. Now they're using Google Slides as a visual overview up on the screen, and we could see it on our phone, but it's also up there visually. So you're not just scrolling through a Google Doc, but mm -hmm. you are going through slide by slide. Yep. I just uh, the way I have seen it's not even just in the education side, the business side, yep. the collaborative side, the, um, the the real time edit is just everything. It's it's so you could be taking notes anywhere and see them doing it. Yeah. And then the way it works for edu is education is just incredible. The way they've got Google Classroom set up as an LMS, and that's what I don't understand. Like so many in higher ed, so K twelve is adaptive they want students to be engaged because students have to be there right higher ed is so far behind oh gosh dude it's insane it's like why it, is it because it, of the money that they have or the endowments or the, the whatever no, i don't I mean, know no because you would think with the money they could adapt and you be relevant the the problem is in my opinion uh, from what i've seen working in k-12 and then in higher ed is higher ed makes you adapt to them and so with mm. K-12, they're adapting yeah. to the students. Let's make it engaging. Kids like videos, let's show videos. Kids want to create, let's make them create. Like let's do stuff that helps engage them yeah. because we want them to learn and that's their experience. With higher ed, it's like, I've been doing lecture this style for 25 years. Uh -huh. I'm the expert. Yeah. You adapt to me. You're, You're paying right. for this. You You're can right. get out if you don't like it. They don't care or they don't know because they didn't have to do it. Right. And so it's like whenever I've worked with a couple higher ed institutions and I've tried to recommend, mm. hey, what you're using for your online education, the reason you're not growing your online education is because, well, the program you're using is the program oh. behind the program right, that right, people are already right. getting out of. So it's like you're Nobody 10 years behind. You're not even five years behind. You're 10 years yeah. behind. And so it's like that's why people don't want to use it. So whenever we, you know, um, whenever we were able to choose what we delivered our curriculum from in the college we're at now with NLC College, I was like, 
It's Why don't we use Google brain. Classroom? Right. One, it's free. Right. Two, it's better than almost all of them. And three, that's what these students are comfortable with. You're talking uh, about a college freshman. I come in, uh, new friends, new environment, new freedom. Everything's new. This is the same. This feels familiar. Yep. This feels safe. Yeah. I know how to do this. Maybe it's because it's free too. You know, public. That they feel like it's better because you pay. To, it's like the yes. kid that was like, "Are you too good to pay for it now?" Yeah. I want to know why his voice changed since I made. I don't know. A comment about him earlier. I want to hang out with him now based off of his voice. He interviewed for us. He did yeah, for a long term supposition. Did he bring he, it? He was, was super cool. Was it like a I prezi? really. No, he came in. It was sitting at a table. We just chat. I don't think we made him do a presentation because it was a long-term sub, so we make him do the whole interview. Awesome. They did. I uh, <laughs> I was like, over the top, Jeff, over the top. <laughs> Jeff interview. That was his name. Jeff interview. But no, he was really great in the interview. He did. I I like. I was like, I remember you. Yeah. And uh, and and Leanne did too. But we were both like, his interview was great. He was really cool. Um, it's just we had somebody that had more certifications. So if you're listening, Jeff interview. Mm-hmm. Um, you were you, did uh, great. you legit you were great. great. Yeah. It's just they had the certifications we needed. My mom's a teacher. Uh, was well, she retired okay. recently, cool. and um, she's very, very creative, super oh, um, crafty, and all that. So it was always K through fifth up in mm-hmm. Ohio, small school, no money. They never passed the levy to get money and all this other kind of stuff. And she had always talked about one of the most difficult things was you know you, you get these classrooms full of computers and all this stuff, and it's the we have to get the software and put it on there for this. But if you just had simple internet mm-hmm. access that update is always happening it's not like you're not purchasing oh, yeah, the new, the you're not bringing the discs in you're no. not doing all this other stuff you don't have to sit right. that thing because i can't tell you you remember you know adobe flash yes oh my goodness oh my that gosh. is a tech director's worst nightmare yeah. because they update yeah. it i'm pretty sure every eight minutes and so <laughs> we didn't give the teachers access because they're going to download viruses every right. time yeah, yeah. Anytime, and yeah. so it's like we don't give them access but then it's like every five seconds this thing is popping up i need you come here and sign this oh in and, s- and get this going like it, we would try to push it out when we could but if they came out with a rando update which they did all the time it would do that and we get so many calls and emails it was terrible so i'm, I'm gonna say i'm, I'm gonna just because you're not going to you might but i'm gonna beat you the punch oh follow at the beats uh that's, neil has a type one diabetes it. uh instagram account is incredible that's what you were gonna say right mm-hmm. Sno- snoop okay. by beats <laughs> uh the uh you have done videos training videos on yeah. the google classroom yeah. And this is it's not an advertisement or whatever. I like to thank our sponsor. I mean, it's Tyler. free, so I'm not making yes. money off of it. So here's the thing is like there are a lot of different uh, – if we literally just said it a minute ago. Every time you need to figure out how to do something, you're going to go on YouTube. But you have done – how many videos have you done on oh, training on how to do Google Classroom? Okay. Well, it's not just Classroom. So with um, – so this guy, he's a Google – he's a trainer and an innovator. I wasn't an innovator until two okay. days ago. Uh, but right um, and I, I emailed him and told him thank you because he made the list that I think had an influence. Because I think this – this little uh, thing that I made for teachers is really helpful, and I think it had a, it helped in my application. I didn't have that in previous applications. Okay. Um, and so his name's Eric Kurtz. He's really great speaker. Does a lot of cool trainings. Um, he made a checklist um, uh, for teachers yeah, yeah. to become a level one Google certified educator. So the four things you can be with Google as a te- as an educator is you can take a three hour test, and if you pass, you can become a level one Google certified educator. Okay. You would be amazed at how many, how few no. teachers have this. I've interviewed what? probably 200 people for teaching jobs. I've had two or less that have had this certification. What? It's one three-hour test. It's not that That's hard. Simple. You should get it. You if you're a teacher. driver's license faster than you can get that. Y- yes, and it's easier. If you've been using Google for a couple of years, you would do well. You also can't kill anybody uh, being a Google certified. Edu- I mean, you could, but it, the education certification wouldn't have nothing to do with yeah. it. <laughs> Unless you like, in yeah. a Google doc, you're like, where That's are crazy. you? Where are you, Clarice? <laughs> I don't know. I've never seen the movie. It sounds great. Um, and so you can be a level one educator. Then okay. you can take that test. It's another three, three and a half hour test. Um, it's for level two. It's like the first one, but on steroids. So it's like, it's a, it's a lot harder. It's like getting your brown belt. Yeah, sure. If I knew the colors of the belts. Hmm? Um, and so you get that. Then after you have those two, then you can apply to be either a trainer and or an innovator. Uh, and so okay. trainer, they take in about 2000 or so trainers a year across the world. Okay. Google does. They accept that many. It's like, I think, 500-ish every quarter. Um, they have low huh. and high quarters, but that's about the average. And so you can be in a trainer. That means you get put in a directory. If schools want to get somebody to train their teachers on Google or anything like that, you are saying, I have shown the skills that have been approved by Google. Right. You have to make a video, yeah. all this stuff, and then they approve you. And you have to do, like I think, at least 12 trainings a year just to keep that. 
Um, and bad, you, though, because no. their stuff's changing way more than 12 times a year. Uh, yes, so you and you actually have to retake the level one and two exams every two years, I think, just to keep those. Hmm. Um, and so, and they don't do it for money. They do it because the stuff changes. Like, yeah. they've entirely redone Google Sites. It's way better now. Wow. They're getting rid of Google Groups looks different. Everything looks oh, different. Oh, it does, yes. It's so much different. And they got rid of Google Plus, rest in peace. Um, yeah, it's a, a new Facebook. That was a good move. Um, so, uh, <laughs> and then... You can also be an innovator, which they only take in maybe 100 to 150 a year across the world. And so it's way more select group. And you can uh-huh. tell this when you go to conferences. They always, Google always is like education, big education conferences. They're like, trainers, we're doing a big party and hangout. And it's like innovators get to go to like this secret <laughs> dinner and they get like free swag and hang out. I'm like, I want to be in that room. Yeah. And so that's the only the reason I'm applying. You're platter that doesn't, wasn't yes. enough for everybody That's it. Else. I was like, I want the mini statue of the G with the different colors. Man. That's why I want that. But um, those are the levels. So that was a long way to say um, the level one exam, which is like entry level showing I know Google. Eric Kurtz made a checklist of all the things you need to know for every Google program, docs, sheets, slides, classroom, um, uh, there's Google groups, like all these different things, YouTube, all these different things you need to know. And if you know it, I mean, stuff as easy as like how to create a new doc Uh where you hit the plus sign and hit (laughs) new, okay? All the way into like, you you know, there's like one for you can set up Google Calendar um, to where you can have a calendar to where people can go in and reserve rooms and then it would show up on everybody's like it's just you can automate rooms and then it would take it off a list and so people can't reserve that room anymore it's like there uh, you can do it's it gets more intricate but it's still level one so it's not crazy okay well what i did was i took his list of i think there's like like two 250 um 200 200 or 250 different skills and i went in over several months at it night t- it took a long time. yeah it was pretty much every night for from like 9 or 10 p.m. As soon as I could get my kids in bed and I quit talking to my wife, I was like, Amanda, are you good? Did you got a show to watch on Netflix? All right, I'm going to go in here and work. I'm going to make 300 300 of today. these videos. And so I'd go in and record those videos and then I'd in, edit them, upload. So it's a screenshot of what you're doing, screen grab, whatever, so yeah. they can see your screen and yep. they can hear you walking. You hear me talking. Okay. And I'm walking them through what to do. And I'm trying to do it not just from like, step one, you do this, step two. Yeah. I'm doing that, but I'm also like, Hey, if you're a teacher, this is where students are going to run into problems. Yeah, hey, this, this is, is where you're doing why this. this is important. It's yes. not just do this, this, and this. Yep. This okay. is where you'll use this, or this is right. something that supplements this. I'm okay. trying to think as a teacher, what would I want to know? And so I made videos for all of them. And yeah. so I made a copy of his checklist, added in a few that I think are good. Better. And then I made a, no, not better. Okay. And I made a videos for all of them, and then I shared it. And it, I mean, honestly, I don't do a ton that gets a lot of, it's hard for me to get people to pay attention to me because I make a lot of freaking, what? freaking content, man. No, um, the only thing I care about is my podcast with you. I'm a podcast with my wife. Mm-hmm. And it's because y'all are involved, not it's me. Not in that order. And so. Uh, well, I would say even if you are a business person, mm-hmm. these videos are helpful. Thanks, man. They are. It's not just educators. It's, hey, here's, so there's explanations of all oh, that yeah. stuff. I and it's, it's very, uh, very helpful. And it's slash Google. It, and again, I don't feel bad saying it because it's, it's free. I don't get any money. Yeah. Um, unless you watch it like 100,000 times, that would get me some ad money. But other than that, I'm not making jack on like it. 14 cents is yeah. what that gets you. Yeah. Totally, uh, totally. And then it. also I've got a short link uh, that goes to the doc. It's bit.ly slash gtarver. Okay. And so I do that so I can remember it and say it. So it's a Google Doc, and it's, it's cool. I always like it when I go into that Google Doc and I could see that people are in there. Anonymous Unicorn is checking yeah. out your doc. I'm like, yes, yeah, I did this for finally, a reason. They're in there. Because I have a uh, scattered battlefield of pro- content I've made for people that yeah, nobody but, ever looks at. Well, you gotta, you're going to hit one of them. Uh, maybe. I, I think uh, I, I think – your knowledge understanding of Google is huge, but then I actually see the benefit of it because there's college students walking around and they're all in it. And you said that, which one of the best things, all of these K through 12 students are going to be the ones down the road. Yep. And my kids don't have a clue how to use any Microsoft product because no. it's not where it's going. So no. I think this is very helpful. But they're good at their iPhone. And oh, yeah. so whenever it comes to buying a tablet, they're going to buy an iPad. And so they're going to stick with Apple on the hardware. Yeah. And then until like Apple starts integrating theirs, because they've got the benefit in the hardware, but Google's got the benefit that they're accessible everywhere. Yeah. Yep. So Google's just easier right now. Once Apple really figures out how to make all those products accessible Same. on any desktop computer, uh-huh. Chromebooks, anywhere else, right. once they figure that out, they're going to be a competitor. But Google's right. really got a footing right well, now. They're way ahead, too. They're way ahead, just yeah. because they've been doing... I think Google for Education really kicked off in like 2000. I mean, it started in like the mid 2000s, but it really started getting heavy around 2010 to 12 is when they really started investing. It's also when YouTube started going up. And uh, so I think that they've just been able to those integrate are probably their connected. stuff. 
Probably so, seeing as how say. they own them. Have I gone and talked about Google for over an hour and a half I now? like it. Because I love Google, I like and I love Apple, and so... It's not... You're not going to get away from this. No. And I think people, uh, if you have been... Is it averse? If yeah. you don't want to go down this road, no. I think it's a matter of taking And it's your, all you're going to do is, what's that uh, Stephen Covey book, um, Influence Lives and Irritate People? That's it. <laughs> what yep. is it? Oh, it's definitely it. Yeah, I don't know. You're, Stephen Covey. I don't know. Yeah. You're going to irritate the people around you, especially oh, yeah. the ones that are used to having options and used yeah. to things being accessible. When you start closing doors, you're going to close people out. Man. Is that the name of our podcast? Closing mm-hmm. Doors and Closing Out doors. by Stephen Covey. <laughs> yeah, he he doesn't even know about us. He's I've been hey, if you're him. Stephen Covey, would you go ahead and give us a five star <laughs> rating on this? My kids Thanks, do that Steve. in their YouTube. Titus has a gaming video, and he's like, "Hey, Ryan from Ryan's Tour Review, if you're watching this, please <laughs> like it." And I'm like, so "He's not watching. He made 22 mil last year. He's, he's doing fine. fine. Oh, he's doing mine. fine. Broke your iPad. Don't well, go broke. This is great. I like this. this. Good. Thanks, man, for listening to me ramble. I learned stuff. You taught him about diabetes. I taught him about good for getting ready to kitchen. I can't oh. talk right. Can't get right. Remember that from the movie Life with Martin Lawrence and uh, and Man, I uh, whatever happened to him. Bad Boys Three. Bad Boys Three coming out. It's coming out. He's doing his best. They just finished. Film. Living my best love. <laughs> <laughs> Not going back and forth. Yeah, we're so happy you guys are here, and we're yeah. so thankful you're listening. We really Thanks, genuinely guys. appreciate it. Um, if you weren't listening, we would have quit doing this. We would have moved on. Just know that. Oh, like, yeah. Like we a long time ago, we have so many ideas, and if we don't think anybody's <laughs> looking at them, we now there's some stuff we'll keep doing because we think it's funny or because each Whether other you wants, get it or not. Like our text message matter. thread, only us are seeing that for the mm-hmm. most part, so we'll keep doing that. Yeah, but everything else, if we're doing it for people to see and you're not watching, we're gonna quit. We're gonna bail. And if you're on the YouTube watching us on the YouTube, I'm so um, sorry because the camera died halfway through, and that's my fault. I, I will say though, you gave it a good try because we tried to put the iPad. I tried up there to put the iPad bit. up there, and it looked stupid, and it, the wide lens isn't wide enough. No, it it's looked never... like something my in-laws would have filmed. <laughs> All right, <laughs> at Magnolia Farms. Thank you, guys. Chip and Joanna oh Gaines. Gosh, I went there with that's Amanda, amazing. stopping through, and there were. I could not stop counting that <laughs> amount of people, eighty year olds plus, that were filming with their iPads. Oh, just filming and taking pics, man. and I'm sitting there thinking, you're never going to be able to find that. You're doing all this, and oh, you don't know where it's they don't going. Know where it is. Go, Je- Jeff, Jeff <laughs> Jr., can you find out how to get this out of the cloud for me? <laughs> Grandpa Jeff, it's not. Grandpa Jeff, Jeff Grandpa. Jeff iPhotos. <laughs> Jeff iPhotos. All right, thank you guys for listening. Thanks, if you give guys. us five stars and a rating, it we'll send you a $2,000 Amazon gift card. Neil will. Um, and we appreciate you. That's not true. Hashtag ad. Fire Festival. If they've listened this long. Yeah, we might. So thank you guys. Um, and again, as always, Neil, thanks mm-hmm. for coming to my TED Talk. Yeah. Ooh, that was uh, M. Not uh, Shyamalan. They didn't know this whole time I was talking to you about thanks for coming to my TED Talk. They thought I was talking to them. I'm here. You're welcome. Should I end it? How I'm trying to see how long I can do this while Neil's finger is hovering above the stop recording button. It's there, <laughs> but I have hard drive space. We can just keep... Okay, so here's the thing with Google. <laughs> G is for the way you look. You know, Just, from Little Rascals. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. Call okay, me. I'm sorry. Thanks for coming out to talk. Okay, bye. Bye. Tyler, let's talk a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> Dabby. Oh, dang it. You got it.